the Office 365 contacts. That actually is, when you go to the little nine blocks, that's under people. Now, it's very unique about Office 365 and the people um, or the contacts component. Office 365 uses people for its outlook and its contacts. In the same way, it also uses people for something called SharePoint, which is a part of 365 and Washington County Public Schools currently has. Because of that, um, you're going to discover that it works a little differently than your standard contact. So let's take a look at contacts. First of all, the first thing you're going to discover is that it's got all kinds of contacts in there, um, some of which are personal contacts. Depending on how you shared your contacts, if you ever set up your um, email on your phone, and depending on how you set up your email, it may have pulled all of your contacts from your telephone. And you can take care of that, you can edit, you can delete, you can manage those up here as you feel the need to do that. Um, if I wanted to get rid of typing agent, for example, I could click delete and it would go away from my contacts. Let's look at directory. I started with the directory. Now you're going to see that all of these are created or are done by um, the school system. So you're going to see that we have all ESP staff, all high school principals, all middle school assistant principals, all middle school principals, etc. All of these are email contact groups that are available in Office 365 and in Office 365 Outlook. So how would I create a new contact? Well, I can click up here under New and I'm going to get a couple of options. Option 1 says create a new contact. Well, that's simple. That's somebody that I want to email. So if I had somebody in Frederick County Public Schools that I wanted to add to our email list, I could simply put their contact in. So let's then let's look at a contact list. Well, the contact list actually would be that kind of list that says, oh, I want to create an email list for the seventh grade team. So I could literally type in there seventh grade team, and then I would start typing in adding their members. And I can add the members. But I'd like to um, caution you with the idea that if you're going to do that, I would probably start off with or add to it something like um, Northern Middle or one of your schools. And you may put it at the beginning of the end. And I'll, I'll show you why that is the case in a couple of minutes. The third one is groups, and that's why, because this now is delving away from our Outlook part and into our SharePoint component. We're not going to go into SharePoint, but if I look at groups, suddenly now I can create a group. And this is a whole different component, because this allows me in a group to not only share um, conversations and files, but also calendars, etc. So that's the part where it's just a little bit more than you know your standard email. If you look at this, I do have a group here, which is the Instructional Technology Group, and if I click on that, you'll see the members of that group who belong in that group, and you're going to see up here that we do have conversations. So you could click on conversations, and these will be emails that are shared all within those groups. Calendars would be available. Files we could share. And we can also share when it says notebook here. These are actually OneNote notebooks that we could share. And the reason I want you to see this or, or think about groups significantly is we're going to take a look at, at groups specifically. And what you're going to discover here are all the groups that I could possibly join. And this is the unique part of SharePoint. This, has, this shows me all the groups that are out there. So if you're thinking about creating groups, please remember that they're visible to everybody in Washington County Public Schools. For more information on groups, check out the groups video.